Hey fellow problem solvers, Colfax Math here. Today's video is a short video on the ASVAB math knowledge portion of the ASVAB exam, the entry exam into the military. I'm going to show you some tips and tricks. I would have paper and pencil out in front of you, take some notes, do the problems before I do them with the video pause, unpause the video, and then watch how I solve them. The more you practice at this, the better your scores are going to be. So let's go ahead and jump in and get started. Number one, so the cube root is saying what times itself, times itself is equal to 64. So what you're saying is what number to the third power is equal to 64. And this is kind of a trial and error. You know, if you did 5, you go 5, 25, 125, too big. 4, 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times 4 is 64. So I could see 4 is my ant. Number two right here, six factorial. That does not mean six. It means six times five times four times three times two times one. And you're gonna do that for whatever number it is, multiply it by the next number down by one each time. So six times five is 30. 30 times four, 120. 120 times three, 360. 360 times 2, 720, times 1, 720. There's my answer right there, answer A. Number 3, evaluate 4x minus 3y when x is equal to 2. I'm going to take that, plug it in there. And y is equal to negative 1. I want to keep track of your negatives. So I have 4 times x, which is 2, minus 3 times negative 1. Negative times the negative is a positive. So I have 8 plus 3 or 11, answer D right there. Number 4, what is the value of the following expression if x equals 2? So again, we're going to set that in there. And y is equal to 4, we're going to plug that in there. So we're evaluating an expression given values of x and y, and we're combining the idea of exponents in there as well. So I have that 2 out front, then I have this 2 plugged in here. 2 to the third power is 2 times 2 times 2. 2, 4, 8, so that's going to be 8. And I'm going to take that y and plug it in right here and square it. 4 squared is 4 times itself for 16. 16 times 8 is 80 and 48, 128. Times 2 is 256. So my answer is answer D. Number 5, what is 3 to the x when x equals 5? Again, this is actually an exponential function, but we're evaluating by taking that value of x and plugging it in there. That gives me 3 to the fifth. It's easier with my fingers. 3 times 3, 9, times 3, 27, 27 times 3, 81, 81 times 3, 243. So 3 to the fifth is 243. Number six, simplify this expression. A couple things going on here. We're going to have to combine all similar terms. But before we could do that, we're going to have to distribute this number through the quantity. So we're going to have to do 3 times that, 3 times that, then distribute the negative 2 through this quantity. So 3 times 2a is 6a. 3 times negative b is minus 3b plus 3b. That's that one there. Those are going to cancel. Negative 2 times c, and then negative 2 times 7, negative 14. So those cancels. These are all dissimilar terms. So I have 6a minus 2c minus 14. None of them can be combined. So I find it right there, answer d. Number 7, adding these two things together. Well, when I'm adding fractions, I have to have a common denominator. That's a number on the bottom. There's no denominator here, so it has to be a 1. So I have 4 over 5x plus x over 1. To get that bottom number, I could only multiply by 1, so it's not to affect the value. So I'm going to multiply this by 5x over 5x. I had a multiplying by 1 doesn't change the value, but that gives me that common denominator. So now I have 4 over 5x plus x times 5x, which will be 5x times x is x squared over that common denominator of 5x. Now that I have a common denominator, I add across the top. So I have 4 plus 5x squared over the common denominator of 5x. 
Um, I look up here and there it is, right there, answer B. Expression plus this expression plus this expression. I'm just gonna write them down vertically and line up all the terms that are similar. So I have three X to the third, nothing squared, minus two X plus eight. My second one here, I don't have anything to the third, but I do have two X squared plus five X. So that's that term. And my third term here, I have X to the third plus two X squared minus three X minus three. And I lined them up that way so that I could add or subtract similar terms. Eight and negative three is a five. Negative two X and five X is three X. Three X and negative three X is zero. I got two X squared plus another two X squared will give me four X squared. And then I have three X to the third plus X to the third gives me four X to the third. So four X to the third, 4x squared, cancel, plus 5. I look up here, and it's this one right here, answer D. Number 9, what is 8B minus AB plus 7A? Subtract this. So I'm trying to do this minus this. It actually should just say subtract. Um, so I'm going to have 8B. Those are the only 8Bs I have. Well, now I have that one right there. So I have 8B minus 1B is going to give me the 7B. I have negative AB minus 9AB. So I got minus minus, which is going to be like a plus. So I'm going to have negative AB minus negative 9AB. These are similar terms, so I could combine them. I'm going to just keep that 7B there. Well, hey, remember this, if I got minus a negative, it's like a guy's on a diving board. He jumps up all over that diving board, boof, through the surface of the pool. So negative AB plus 9AB is going to give me 8AB. So that's going to take care of that term and that term. Then I have 7A minus 3A, which will give me 4A. I've only combined my similar terms. Um, I've simplified it, and I look over to my answers, and here's a 7B, 8AB, and 4A. So that's my correct answer right there. Okay, number 10, what is 5X times this? So what this is saying, just multiply 5X times this. So I have 5X times the quantity 3X squared minus 5. This is like distribution. I got to distribute this 5x through the whole quantity. So I got 5x times 3x squared is going to give me 15x times x to the second as I add my exponents to get a 3. Then I distribute through this term. Negative times a positive will be negative times 5x and 5 will be 25x. And then I look over here to see 15x to the third minus 25x. And that's the correct answer for 10. Number 11, what is the area of a parallelogram? So let's see what it looks like. Parallelogram looks like this. These sides are both congruent and parallel. If the length is x minus 3 and the height is x plus 5, so the height is actually perpendicular to the base, it's x plus 5. Area of a parallelogram is base times height, x minus 3 times x plus 5. When I have one quantity times another quantity, I have to FOIL it. That means my first terms multiplied together, my outer terms multiplied together, my inner terms multiplied together, and my last terms. So FOIL, first, outer, inner, last. First term is x squared. Outer is 5x. Inner is minus 3 times x. So minus 3x, and last is negative 15. After I have that all together, then I combine my similar terms to get x squared. 5x and 3x could be combined at 2x minus the 15. Over at my answer, answer D right here. Number 12, multiplying fractions. I'm going to multiply right across the top, multiply right across the bottom. However, before I do that, I look for a common term in each of them and see if I could cancel. 
Well, five will go into here one time. Five goes into 15 three times. Two goes into itself once, into 32 16 times. Now in the numerator, I have three y. So there's my top number. In the denominator, I have 16 and an x. That's my denominator. And I can see that's my answer right here, 3y over 16x, answer A. Number 13, divide fractions. Dividing fractions is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So I'm going to turn this division into multiplication. Reciprocal means I flip the second term over. So I'm going to have 6x over 11 times this thing flipped over, 5y over 2. Again, I'll look for common terms. Two will go in here one time into here three times. Five and 11, nothing else will reduce. So in the numerator, I have three times x times five times y. The three and the five give me 15 xy over 11 times one, which is 11. And I could see my answer is answer B right here. Okay, number 14, factorize the algebraic expression. So what that means is pull out the common term, very similar to what we were doing with those fractions, looking at numbers or variables that'll go into both of them. So a three is common here and here, and then one z is common in each. So I'm gonna pull that three out front, I'm gonna pull that z out front. Once I pull a three and a z out of here, I'm left with z to the third. Once I pull a three z out of here, I'm left with a two. So I factored out the common term. The reverse of that, only as a check, would be to, to distribute 3z times z to the third would be 3z to the fourth. I would add the exponents plus 6z. So I could see I did do that correctly. I look down here, and here's my correct answer, answer C. Number 15, solve for the variable. That means get x all by itself. 8x minus 1x is 7x equals 9 minus 2x. I'm trying to get all the x's by themselves, so I'm going to add 2x to both sides. 2x and 7x is 9x is equal to 9. These things cancel out. That's why I did that. And I'm still trying to get x by itself. This is multiplication. The way I reverse that process is division. So I divide both sides by 9, giving me x is equal to 1, or answer A right here. Number 16 is solve the system of equations. So I got these two systems of equations. I have to have two equations for two variables. There are three ways to solve. One would be to graph, look for the point of intersection. The second is solve for x in terms of y. Take that, plug it in, and solve. And the third is called linear combinations, where I combine the two lines, hopefully getting rid of one of the variables. And then solving for one variable, take that, plug it back in, and solve for the other variable. So all I'm going to do is rewrite this equation here, 5x plus 6y equals 20. Then I'm going to subtract this equation. Uh, I'm going to actually just multiply through by a negative 1 on both sides of the equation. And then I'm going to add them. Same thing as subtracting it. So I'm going to have a negative 5x, negative 3y, and a negative 14. I'm going to add those together. That's going to cancel 6y and negative 3y is 3y. 3y is equal to 6. I divide both sides by 3, and I get a value for y. y is equal to 2. Now that I have that value for y, it's only half the answer. I'll check up here to see if it'll work. It could either be a or c, so I'm going to have to keep going. I'm going to take that value for y and plug it into either equation. doesn't matter which one. And then I'm going to solve for x. So I'm going to have 5x plus 6 times y, and we know y is 2, is equal to 20. 5x plus 12 equals 20. I'm going to subtract 12 from both sides. 5x is equal to 8. Divide both sides by 5 to get x by itself. And I have x is equal to 8 fifth. This is called the ordered pair, where the first term is x, 8 fifths. The second term is y, 2. I look over here, and I can see answer C. All right, I know it's getting long. We can go up to 20. You know, the more you practice, the more you watch these videos, the more math you do, the better you're going to be at it on any standardized test. You could also go to asvabtutoring.com and get that app. That'll really help 
a lot. Whenever you got a free minute, you could do some more of these math problems. If you need a channel, think about subscribing. I also have some um, sweatshirts and t-shirts in the description down below if you want to support the channel. Okay, number 17, solve x squared plus 10x equals 20, negative 21. This is a quadratic when I have an x squared term, an x term, and a single term. Best way to solve a quadratic is to set it equal to zero to start with. So I'm going to add 21 to both sides, get x squared plus 10x plus 21 is equal to zero. Now that I have my quadratic set equal to zero, there are three ways to solve here. One's a quadratic formula. Uh, you could complete the square or you could factor. So factoring is always going to be the easiest way to do it. The factors of x squared are x and x. Then I'm looking for the factors of 21 two numbers that are going to be multiplied together to give me 21, but added together to give me 10. So 21 and a 1 multiplied together will give me a 21, but added together will only give me a 22 or a 20. Then I'm going to try a 7 and a 3. That's going to work because added together, they're going to give me a 10. Multiplied together, they're going to give me a 21. So there's got to be a 7 and a 3. And then either they're both negative or both positive. In this case, they're both going to be positive. The reverse of factoring is foiling. I talked about that a little bit earlier. So the check is x squared plus 7x plus 3x. Give me 10x plus 21. Now I have this thing right here is equal to 0. This is a zero sum property saying this thing times this thing equals 0. So that means either x plus 7 has to equal 0, or this thing right here could equal 0, or x plus 3 could equal 0. Subtracting 7 from both sides, x is equal to negative 7. Subtracting 3 from both sides, x is equal to negative 3. Two solutions, negative 7, negative 3. Number 18, if 2x equals 32, we have an exponential function. We're looking for an exponent. Then find what x is. The way you actually solve that is logarithms. So we're not going to use logarithms or a calculator. So it's got to be an exact value, meaning one that I could do in my head. So 2 to what power equals 32? 2 to the first is 2. 2 squared is 4. 8, 16, 32. So 2 to the fifth is equal to 32. So x has to equal 5. Number 19, the coordinates of point A and B are these. What is the slope of the line? Slope is usually represented with the letter M. M is equal to rise over run. Mix it up a little bit with red here. Rise over run. Rise is going to be the change in the y value. So it's going to be the difference in the y values divided by the difference in the x values. And that's going to be run. So I'm going to do y2 minus y1. These are always x and y. I'll call this my first point. So it will be x sub 1, y sub 1. This will be x sub 2, y sub 2. So I'm going to have y sub 2, negative 4 minus 4 over x sub 2, negative 2, minus negative 1. Negative 4 minus 4 is negative 8. This is that diving board thing, right? Minus a negative. It's going to turn that thing into a positive. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. Negative divided by a negative is a positive. So I end with the slope of 8. Answer C right here. Another way to do that is you could even graph them and see if that even makes sense. Negative 1, 4, I go over negative 1, up 4, way out of scale there. I go over negative 2, up 8, no, up negative 4. So here's my other point right there. What is the slope of that line? Well, the slope of that line from negative 2 to negative 1 is I run 1. I rise from negative 4 to 4, I rise 8, so I can see my slope is 8 over 1. Okay, back to the white pen. Number 20, wrapping it up. What is the slope of this line right here? This is an mx plus b format, or it pulls mx plus b. This is the same m as I was talking about before. That is the slope. The slope is negative 3, the value in front of x. The y-intercept is 1. So my correct answer is answer C. If you made it all the way here, congratulations. Just keep working at it, and you'll do great on your standardized test. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments. I appreciate you watching, and good luck.